The Mohs Hardness Scale is a system of classifying crystals and gemstones based on their relative hardness. It was devised in 1822 by a German mineralogist called Frederick Mohs. He chose minerals to use as standards for the scale that have a distinct hardness and could easily be found in a high state of purity. His system is still used to this day to quickly narrow down and identify a mineral. These days, with all the other tests that we can use, the Mohs Hardness Scale is a kind of a last resort because it involves placing a small scratch on the surface of the mineral. This makes it less helpful for jewellery pieces, for example, but in many cases it is a test that will quickly narrow down the possible identity of your test sample. Mohs used for his scale the following minerals. Number one, talc. Number two, gypsum. Number three, calcite. Number four, fluorite. Number five, apatite. Number six, feldspar, in this case, moonstone. Number seven, quartz. Number eight, topaz. And number nine, corundum, in this case, ruby, or it could be sapphire. And number ten, diamond. The scale is not a linear scale, for example diamond is actually four times harder than corundum and corundum is twice as hard as topaz. It is a simple relative scale used to categorise minerals and narrow down their possible identity. Mose was criticised at the time amongst mineralogists but his simple scale of reference is still used to this day as a basic test of a crystal or mineral's likely identity. Put simply, it is a measure of one mineral's ability to scratch the surface of another mineral. It has a number of practical uses. Firstly, you need to be willing to scratch the surface of your mineral, or otherwise to scratch another test sample with your unidentified mineral. Glass is usually has a Mohs hardness of around about 5 to 6. So a perfect test as to whether a sample is actually quartz or whether it's glass is to simply attempt to scratch the sample with a piece of quartz. If it scratches the sample very easily you've quickly ruled out quartz as a, as a possible uh, suspect. And this of course the quartz minerals include amethyst, rose quartz, citrine, smoky quartz, aventurine, etc. Topaz, for example, has a hardness of 8 and can easily be tested and non-destructively by attempting to scratch it with a piece of quartz. And no matter how hard you try, you simply cannot scratch uh, the surface of topaz with a piece of quartz. Our fingernail, for example, has a hardness of 2.5 so it is actually useful to use your fingernail to test some of the softer minerals uh, like calcite will scratch our fingernail gypsum won't scratch our fingernail some things to remember about using the Mohs hardness test no one test is definitive we should always use a series of tests before ruling out the identity of a mineral also, some minerals can be quite deceiving because they have what's called a directional hardness, meaning that they will test differently depending on which direction you scratch the surface. Kyanite, for example, has a hardness of 4 in one direction and a hardness of 7 at right angles to that. Diamond is another mineral that has a strong directional hardness. Sometimes the crystal structure of a sample will have weaknesses in places. It is important not to mistake fractures or weak points with a genuine scratch of the surface. Hardness picks and pencils are also a very, very handy tool because uh, they allow us to place a very, very accurate uh, and small scratch in, in a mineral. And we can then look very closely with a magnifying glass or a loop to see whether we have actually broken the surface of the mineral. So that's a very, very brief look at the Mohs hardness test and it has some very practical uses today in separating and narrowing down our gemstones. Thank you.